What's happening, everybody? And welcome to the Other Side of the Firewall podcast, where we highlight those movers and shakers and glass ceiling breakers, those people of color who've made it to the other side of the proverbial firewall. My name is Ryan Williams, and today I'm joined by Shannon Times. What's up, what's up? And LeVon Maynard. What at? <laughs> so uh, another action-packed show. We're having a really good week. Uh, please make sure you tune in to all the episodes that happen this week. In this particular episode, I will lead us in discussion about the uh, the current uh, employee lockdown stress that's uh, been being reported. So uh, I took this from the threat post. This actually does, this is applicable. I don't know if it's everybody's job, but since uh, emerging from the pandemic, I have seen that people are uh, very lax with their computer usage. And uh, also uh, am noticing people like, yeah, I got a virus or yeah, I got this or yeah, somebody took my credentials or yeah, all this ransomware. And uh, the site is trying to link the two together, which does make sense uh, because people are working from home or just because they're stressed out and doing their job in the COVID environment, uh, having to sit there to mask on their cubicle and what have you. Uh, a lot of them are using what they're calling shadow IT um, applications, which basically just means they're 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 not doing what they're supposed to do. Like every, when we get our accounts in most organizations, you sign a user agreement, you're told what you can and cannot do with your work computer. Uh, and they've noticed an uptick since the pandemic of people just doing whatever the hell they want to do with their computer. I've witnessed it myself. You're like, come on, <laughs> that's, <laughs> that's your work computer. You can't do that. Or just using programs that are end of life or just, uh, uh, programs that they uh, retrieve that are not exactly legal copies uh, just because it makes their life easier. It makes it more efficient. I get that. Uh, but we're also seeing that, like we said last week in the banking industry where um, I think it was Flagstar or, or whatever the name of that bank was from overseas with the funny money and their big bills um, using the end of life uh, software that, that got them uh, a data breach. So with all that being said, how do you guys feel about this? Yeah, it seems like uh, I think people are just getting too comfortable. It's uh, it's been a, a long pandemic. Everybody's been on lockdown. Everybody's getting uh, you know, a little uh, what's a cabin fever? A little bit of the cabin yeah. fever. So they're trying to like you know, uh, you know, people are trying to make life easy. And I think besides just the employees themselves, I know that companies in general have just been like kind of open things up so that they can we need to get you guys to work. So we're going to open up all the firewalls and, and make sure you guys can connect from home or wherever you're at from your mobile phone or whatever. And some people may not be going through the same, are they proper steps, proper protocols to secure the, their networks. Make sure they're not like opening up their, their, uh, their infrastructure to the bad guys. And also like the devices too. I'm sure there are a lot of, a lot of companies may be issuing out laptops or like, uh, you know, whatever devices they can use so they can connect to the network and, and maybe the company hasn't secured them enough that employees can just do whatever they want. They can start in installing these like random applications like you were describing, Ryan, and they can use the shadow, shadow IT and just like use programs to kind of like make their jobs easier, try to automate some things, but things that may be outside of the company's policy. Um, and I think, you know, it, it's on the employee as well as the company as well to make sure that the, uh, uh, that the, the employees don't have full access to the device. They don't have like admin rights to be installing you know, should be locking down these these components, and they should have the rights. I mean, they should have minimal rights to just to do the job. Um, the The work computer should be for work, and should be no other like, you know, Facebooks and Twitter and all this other kind of stuff. Unless you're watching the the, the, the podcast, you can watch the podcast on your on your work device. But <laughs> anything besides that, you gotta like put a put an X on it. But I think that's that's probably probably the main thing. People are just getting kind of fed up, or just getting like you know comfortable they're at home they got the kids there they got stuff running you know going on behind them they just want to make their lives a little bit easier one less thing to worry about just try to make something that they do every day on the on the work computer just make it easier so uh um i think that's probably like the the gist of it and like i said hopefully you know companies can they can try to lock down the devices a little bit more secu- make it more secure so they don't have this this situation popping up but uh you have some thoughts on it as well shannon so I, I do. When I when I read this, it, it I don't want to say it was shocking to me, but it was one of those things that I'm like, why why would you do this? Like to me, it just seems like you're violating the terms of your employment, right? Because I can almost guarantee you that your company made you either sign something or or or, or acknowledge somehow through training that you're not supposed to 
install anything that you're not supposed to be installing. Like even with the telework that's going on now, right? Because I I, I don't understand why someone would think that's okay. So right? a, a quick example, what? on certain computer uh, uh, systems, when you plug into their network, you cannot get to your Google Drive and things of that nature. You can't basically remote into a, a to, in, info, to infiltrate and ex- extract data. But as soon as you take that same laptop home, it's game on. And mm-hmm. people just, for whatever reason, or on purpose, they'd be like, yeah, I want to be able to pull all my files with people's PII on them onto the... But it's, but it's still logged, more than likely, right? And, right. and I, don't know, I, don't know what each, I don't know what each company has when it comes to their, uh, their uh, data loss prevention is what that's called, data loss prevention uh, system or whatever, right? right? I don't know what they have for that, but more than likely it's logged. And the second you plug back up into that network, guess what's going to happen? There's going to be a log. It's going to go forward to some server somewhere that says, hey, this person did this, that, and the third, right? And if people are doing their job in their IT department, they're going to see it and it's going to flag, right? So, but right. but here's the thing: it's like you know it's wrong, though, right? Yeah, I don't I don't understand why people think it is okay because it is it is now convenient for them. With it being a term of your employment, don't get mad. So, like if you get if you get caught doing this, don't get mad when you get fired, right? Mm-hmm. Like you you can't because you signed on saying. And again, I'm 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 making an assumption here, right? Like I know we always talk about how these companies should be doing this, that, and the third better, but. I think this is like one-on-one stuff. I'm fairly confident that 100% of the companies out there have you sign something saying, don't put anything illegal on our networks, right? Like if you're going to do any type of telework or whatever. Um, but yeah, it, it, you, 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 I can't see how my, if, if this was me, right? My convenience should not over, should, should not um, be more of a priority than the company uh, fulfilling its mission, Right. That shouldn't be the case. Now, it, it, it it's inconvenient. I get it, right? Like I, me, I'm one of those people where I don't mind it. Like I don't mind doing this because it gives me a little bit more time to do other things. Like if my workday gets extended, you know what I mean? Because I have to run an errand or something, it's a lot easier, you know what I mean? But maybe it's because my company's a little more understanding, right? I just have to let my boss know, hey, got a doctor's appointment. I'm be out of, I'm gonna be out of pocket for a few hours. I've never had it where he's come back and been like, no, you can't do that because of the second and the third. I make sure I make all my telecons. I make all my meetings. You know what I mean? I provide, you know, uh, uh, any type of artifacts or anything like that that need to be done. I, I just don't, I don't get it. Like that should not, it should not overweigh anything. And, and, and to me, man, I know I seem like I'm the one that's always going away from IT, but this is just, this is just one of those things like this is, this is, I think this is a, a product of a society that we live in to where it's like, you need to do better to make sure everything is good for me. No, that's not the case. You know what I mean? I'm me as an employee, I'm not paying you, you're paying me. So you tell me what the demands are. You know what I mean? You tell me what I need to do. Hence me signing whatever letter I signed or acknowledging however through training, right? Saying I will not do this, that, and the third. And I think that's just that's just the way we're going is people are just like, this isn't convenient for me. So I'm just gonna do whatever I want to do and I don't care. Well, you should care when you're out of a job, right? Because those things are not like there are people in in lines at food pantries right now to get food, you know, that are not as fortunate as you that have a job to do something, right? So do everything you can to keep it and be good at it. You know what I mean? Right. That, yeah, that's definitely, what, that just struck me when I read it. I was just like, yeah. why do people think that's okay? I, d- I definitely don't disagree with you, but as, as you were uh, describing it, I, it, something, something, I don't know if it clicked or I just, so our perspective is always going to be calm focus because we work for uh, either IT or cybersecurity or some type of company like that. What about a, um, a person who is in project management and they don't have a security person, but they still are accessing files from home and what have you. And they're using third party uh, software or whatever on their own computer, but they still access the internet at work or, you know what I mean? Like just people who just have no, because we get it every single year for the past I've been, I've gotten at, at least 18. And then when I got in trouble, another night, I got another one. <laughs> I had to sign another user agreement for doing what I shouldn't be doing on the computer. Back when I was a young airman, young airman, don't, don't worry about that. But, <laughs> but so I, I've, I've been, I've been signing user agreements for 20 years. It's been browbeat into me, but what if you've never done that? What, so if, what if your first, what if your first laptop is, is your issue laptop? So here's the, here's, but here's the thing though. <laughs> 
I, I still find it hard to believe, even if you're not a company for IT, even, let's say it's a construction company, right? So let's say it's somebody that works for a construction company. If they have an intranet of some type, somebody set it up and somebody said, this is what you should and should not do on this. Like, I find it very hard to believe. And again, my experience is limited that even a company that is not directly IT focused has not taken, has not taken advantage of telling people that they should not be adding things to the network or whatever, because for them, it could, if you get a, if you get a virus on your intranet, what does that do for you as a construction company? All those blueprints you may have had for different, uh, different contracts or whatever, or, or, right. or companies that you were building for that stuff can go away. You know what I mean? It can, you, you, all of a sudden you hit with some ransomware, right? Like, Oh, if you want all this back, you small little construction company got to pay me $500,000 or whatever it, it may be. And that's going to hurt. You know what I mean? I just find it hard to believe that they have not that thought that far forward. And that's not even thinking that far forward to me. And you know what? You know what it could be? It could be something you referenced before in a previous podcast, LeVon. I've been doing it for so long, right? With my experience, like maybe it's just the expectation, right? And, and maybe that's what it is. Like, I don't know what I don't know, though. I don't, I haven't worked for a construction company. I've stayed in IT since I've retired, right? So for me, like you said, Ryan, I still see those user agreements I got to assign, right. right? Like I still, I still see all those things, but it just seems like, and especially in this day and age with IT, like they have to be hip to the game, right? Right. So maybe that's, so again, another light bulb, right? Went off. What if this is uh, a prime example of what a VCISO is for? For those companies I, who've never had an IT person. So instead of like Jim or, or uh, Jill setting up the network and they have no clue how to set it up, but they want to, they want to do their own private business. They want to do it remotely. Uh, they need you, Shannon. <laughs> I, I, they need I, you. I swear to you, I was, I was going to say that, but I pulled back. I swear to you. Before, it might be, it might be that. It might be it. <laughs> like, before I handed it back to you, Ryan, I was going to be like, well, this, the V CISO they possibly have should still yeah. know that, right? Well, like, cause, I, they, cause I, they don't have it. And cause there's, they saw all these vacancies, all these vacancies in actual companies that report that they have vacancies. What about the, the mom and pops and the, uh, the side hustle contractors and all that good stuff. They have no clue. Maybe they never even had a, a, a user agreement before, or maybe they just don't know that they need to generate one. And they say, no, I, I plug in my, uh, my Android because we don't have those issues with Apple products. And then now I got a, now I got a virus. <laughs> you could be right. You, you, you could very well be right on that, Ryan. Like, like I said, my experience is limited and that could be the case. Like if but I don't know. Laptop, they just, yeah. Cause yeah. Cause I, I, again, my, my view is very myopic as well. Cause I, I, I've never worked for a company uh, outside. So before I joined the military, I worked for a bank. Um, we didn't do any work outside. I counted checks and I deposited them after, after hours. So there was really no uh, computer use. And after that I did, um, uh, or I'm sorry, before that I did, uh, uh, JC pennies. I was phone dockers. So mm. <laughs> I don't know. But, I don't know what's out there, but you're, but you're going back 18, 20 years to where right. it wasn't as prevalent for, you know, ransomware and viruses and things of that nature computers were around right but it wasn't as prevalent it wasn't as well known as it is today you know what i mean especially yeah. with the way news gets out so easily now like you can have it like that that someone got attacked by some type of malware or whatever right so mm -hmm. people now i think are more hip to the game than what it was like my my very first job i was working in a nursing home kitchen right? Like I wasn't around any electronics or anything like that either, right? I just had to make sure I, I, I had a hairnet if needed and I had gloves on if I was touching food, you know what I mean? Like this is, mm. this is what it was. Like, right. I, I hear you. I hear you, man. It, it, but yeah, I don't, I don't know. But maybe that's, maybe that's the, the drive behind this, uh, the, this new virtual sizzle thing, because you could work for a, a, a couple companies and probably charge them good money just to implement from cradle to grave uh, cybersecurity, like maybe that's what I'll do. <laughs> Work for for five companies making six figures at each because they that's need right. me. Y'all need me. <laughs> and you're I don't think I don't think it works like that though. I said yeah, yeah, no, no, that's the case. Case. Hey, works like that. <laughs> if that's the case, look, I'm yeah, going. It's to probably play. that's I'm why going. they. Yeah, that's why in the article it said a fraction of, a fraction of the cost. I'm getting, I got to work five different jobs to, to build one salary or not. I don't know. None of them will talk to me. I've been talking to you, V-Sizzles. I've been reaching out and it's a secret organization 
And y'all all work together, apparently, because none of y'all let me know how it works. Oh, confidentiality. I'm staring at y'all <laughs> through the podcast. Just give me a hint of how this, how this job works. Right. Well, the, the v Sizzle Masons. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> the Masons <laughs> Underground Club. They won't, they won't break it down to me. I just need to, how, how, how does the job work? Like, but uh, I, I mean, uh, one of them did tell me it's about confidentiality, though. Like, they don't want to disclose contracts, things of that nature. And I get that. Um, but you're not asking but, for specifics of, of, of the contract for a company they work for. You just want yeah, to. Yeah, or, or the companies. Don't even tell me the companies. Yeah. Just yeah. how, how, what is, what is a, a day in the life of V Sizzle is what I'm looking for. So that's a plug out there. If you know a V Sizzle or somebody who claims to be V Sizzle, uh, we could do it anonymously. I could do like uh, back in the day when they had the, the black silhouette with the voice modulator <laughs> i like so that i can tell me our secrets <laughs> so, so. blur them out <laughs> yeah. we, we went all off the rails anybody got anything else to say <laughs> about no. shadow it i even yeah, though it's a term me. they made yeah. they made up a whole new term on this i'm probably going to call it shadow it because it just sounds cool yeah. i think I've, i think i've heard that before but not too often yeah i've never it's the first yeah, but, all right. Well, shout out to my co-host. It was a good conversation. Uh, shout out to the uh, the Patreon patrons and uh, shout out to all those listening to it on free feed. So if you're a YouTube subscriber or if you're not a YouTube subscriber, I should say, please subscribe, like, share, hit that bell. Uh, let us know what you like. Um, if you are listening to us on your podcast service of choice, you can still give us input. You can even leave a voice message if you want to. Um, when it comes to our social media, you can hit us up on www.theothersideofthefirewall.com. That leads to all of the different social media platforms that we're on. Uh, and then personally, you can hit me up on uh, Twitter, LinkedIn, Clubhouse, or TikTok at RyRy Security Guy. That's R Y R Y Security Guy in Levon. And hit me up by, at, at the Twitters on uh, at Levon Maynard. There it is. So y'all be easy. Roger that. Take care, everybody. <laughs>